agencies, and we were. <clears throat> this guy, I, I put them on a clock, and I made them. I made them all nervous, right? So they're, they're, you know, having competition. They'd never done this before. They never applied the emergency kits. They'd never dealt with that stuff. And this one guy, he, you know, he complained. He said, he said, look, you, you're you're making us hurry here, and it's, you know, we're we're going to make mistakes. And I said, that's right. That's that's the whole point. <laughs> If I give you thirty, if I give you thirty minutes to do this, you know, sure, anybody can do it, right? But when you're when you're suited up in this big moon suit and you got the the respirator, you know, pumping oxygen to you, and you're sweating and you can't see, and and you know, this green stuff is getting out and killing people. You don't have time to mess around. So uh, I said, I said, I, I understand your point, but but that's why we practice. As we drill and we practice and we work this so that when we get to the end, in a real emergency, amen, it, it comes natural. Oh, Lord. Come on. Are you getting this? Are you getting this? So it's why we pray, and it's why we study the Word of God, and it's why we do the homework. I don't go to an altar because I'm backsliding. I go to an altar because that's where my life is. You hear me? I, I, I don't come here and pray because my world is crashing and my bank account's empty and my wife is on, the, on a train to, to Nashville. That's a country song. I just thought it'd come in. <laughs> I pray because God said pray. I, I pray because it is my lifeblood. I live in an altar of prayer, and that way when trouble does come, I, 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 I don't need to, I don't, well, what am I supposed to do now? I know what I'm supposed to do. I'm, so, I'm sorry, y'all missed that. That was good preaching. Amen. <laughs> so, so it's, it, it, in every arena of our lives, we have to, we have to, well, Tammy said it Sunday morning, practice the presence of God. So it's a great, little, great illustration here. It's hard if, if, you, if you don't practice. It's hard to hit the right notes. I'm not talking about y'all. You understand that? I ain't talking about you at all. I'm talking about, I'm talking about our life. Amen. If we don't practice the presence of God, if we don't practice prayer, we're going to miss it. Uh, a, a little disclaimer as we start here tonight. I'm, we're still in the book of James, right? I, I, took a, I, I took a little detour because of that vision I had Monday night a couple of weeks ago. Uh, but tonight we're picking back up. We're picking back up in James chapter 3, so you can go ahead and turn there. Now, uh, none of you know all the conversations that I've had with people today, okay, or this week. So uh, let me tell I've already told a couple of people, look, look, <laughs> I ain't preaching to you. But let me say this to everybody here tonight. I'm not preaching this because of something you've said to me. This is where we are in our study as we go through the book of James. I think it is timely. I told somebody this afternoon, I said, I said, now look, I'm preaching through the book on, on James chapter 3, and you've got to know I'm not talking about you. And he said, well, it must be, must be time for it. I said, well, no, I think it's a little late. We, <laughs> I think I should have hit this last month. <laughs> But it's coming up, and so this is where we are. Don't you love how the Heavenly Father just works these things out? You know, there is no accidents in this God. Amen? All right, I want to read through this. Let's just read it, and then we'll, I'm going to come, I'm going to preach. <clears throat> James chapter 3, verse 1. My brethren, knowing, be not many masters. That word master is teachers. So, you know, you shouldn't desire to be a teacher. Now, he's going to come back and kind of tag on this in a little bit. Be not many teachers, knowing that we, he put himself in that group, shall receive the greater condemnation, a greater judgment. For in many things we offend all. It's easy to offend, folks, right? We all stumble and trip over many things. If any man offend not in word, the same is a perfect man, and able also to bridle the whole body. Behold, we put bits in horses' mouths that, we may, that, that they may obey us, and we turn about their whole body. Behold also the ships, which though they are so great, yet they're driven and driven with fierce winds, yet are they turned about with a very small helm or rudder, whether soever the, the governor or the ship's captain wants to. Even so, the tongue is a little member. <laughs> I'm going, there's got to be another translation for that word. <laughs> the 
tongue is a little member, and it boasteth great things. Behold how great a matter a little fire kindleth. Billy, I think about my dad's attitude toward burning brush in the hill country. <laughs> uh, and the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. Now look, I mean, James is just going to go off here. So is the tongue, uh, and, and the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. So is the tongue among our members that it defiles the whole body and sets on fire the course of nature and is set on fire of hell itself. For every kind of beasts and of birds and of serpents and of things in the sea and t and is tamed and has been tamed of mankind. But the tongue can no man tame. It is an unruly evil, full of deadly poison. With it we bless God, even the Father, and with it we also curse men, which are made after the image, the similitude of God. Out of the same mouth proceeds blessing and cursing. My brother, my brethren, these, my cistern, <laughs> these Things ought not so to be. Do you agree with God's word? Amen. Keep reading. Does the fountain send forth water at the same place? Sweet water, um, send forth at the same place. Sweet water and bitter. Can a fig tree, my brethren, bear olive berries? Either the, a vine, figs. So can no fountain both yield salt water and fresh. Who is a wise man? And endued with knowledge among you, let him show out of a good conversation his works with meekness of wisdom. But if you have bitter envy and strife in your hearts, where is it? Where is it? Where does bitterness live? Where does strife live? It's not in your brain, it's in your heart. If, if it, if we're going to talk about the heart tonight. In your hearts, glory not, and lie not against the truth. This wisdom descends not from above, but it is earthly, it is sensual, and devilish. It's of the devil, James is saying. Wherefore, for where envying and strife is, there is confusion and what? Man, I'm telling you, James is killing it. <laughs> you, you know, he, he just made a huge generalization. You show me a home full of envying and strife, I'll show you there's more evil at, in that house than you know. It, that, that's what he's saying. You know, if there's not peace, if there's not love flowing, then there's envy and strife flowing, and you can bet that there's other evil hiding around the corner somewhere. Because the curse will not causeless come. Lord, I'm preaching now, and you just ain't getting it yet. Verse 17, last verse. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, easy to be entreated, full of mercy, and good fruits without partiality and without hypocrisy. And the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace of them that make peace. Let us all hit the altar. Is there anybody in this house that this word did not nail you right between the eyes? Anybody? Uh, if so, come take this mic and teach us. The word is alive, it's sharp, it's powerful, and it cuts right to the heart. And Folks, this word right here is something that every believer needs to, needs to spend a month reading this one verse, one chapter in this book. Until you get it down. <laughs> Amen. Lord, we love you. We thank you for this day. We thank you for your word. It is so anointed. Holy Spirit, anoint our mind to grasp what you're trying to say tonight. Let us hear your word and believe it and put it to practice. We ask in Jesus' name and everybody said amen. So James spent a lot of time talking about the negative aspect of, of, of the word how many of you just were very generic and very general? If you look back over your life, you would agree with me. Pastor, I have been wounded by words. 
Anybody not been wounded by words? I mean, it's, it's, it's you know, as a, a lot of my makeup as a, as a young boy and a, and a young man growing up, a lot of my issues came from the words that were, that were hammered into my head when I was a teenager. You know, you're so immature, you're so insecure, I can't believe you, you can't do nothing right, you're so immature, you're so insecure, you, 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 hello? And that, 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 that program began to get into my spirit because let me tell you something, a kid will believe those in authority that are speaking words to them. And so folks, you and I have a choice, we can speak words of life or we can speak words of death. But life and death, death and life, are in the power of the tongue. The power of death and life is in the tongue. Do you hear me? It, it's not just negative, but the, it's the power to give life, the power to call people to a position. It don't take no profit to look at somebody that's struggling and tell them, you're so weak. What's wrong with you? Why don't you just grow up? What kind of fool thinks they're saying something that, that the obvious, the Captain Obvious? Hello, Earth to Captain Obvious. You know, you Really? You know, here, here's somebody that's just crumbled and fallen, and you're going to tell them, you're so stupid. What's wrong with you? Yeah. Or you can get out on your knees and put your arm around them. Yeah. Hey, bud, listen to the difference. That was stupid. Yeah. Not you're stupid. Yeah. You see the difference? If, if you're just given to using the word stupid, let's just change a little bit. That was stupid. Let me help you up, and we're going to make this right. You see the change? You, you don't have to call them stupid. I think it, you, you could use a better word. <laughs> you know, but uh, if, you're just, if you're just, you know, ticked off, I get it. But you see, you have to be careful about, about speaking into people's lives words that will, according to James, set on course uh, <clears throat> in verse 6. Set on the that, that it is set on fire and the and the cor, it'll set on fire the course of nature and it it is set on fire of hell. You don't even realize sometimes you and I have trouble realizing that especially when our kids are growing up and they get on our nerves and we start calling them little epitaphs. They're late. You're so lazy. Why don't you get up and clean your room? You know, come on, guys. You know, if if you can't control that 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 thing right there, it's going to destroy your children. They're going to limp around their entire lives. And I'm looking at a church full of people that, that, that have been wounded by the words. <clears throat> and as we're, I want you to understand one thing. As I'm using and we're talking about words and we're talking about language, uh, I want you to understand we're not just talking about the words that come out of your mouth. Because how many of you know that only, a, uh, you know, what, what is it, 20% of communication is, 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 is verbal? The rest of it's nonverbal? You know? <clears throat> So, if you can just, if any of these verses stuck out to you, what is the principle that one could use, that you and I could use, to guide us as we try to help people out of their condition? What, what is it that James said? To try to keep from calling our kid lazy, and instead challenge him to live in a different manner. What is the, what, 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 what is the, the principle, the concept that James has just put out to us that's going to help us call people up? Look, 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 look back over. It's here. Verse 9. Read verse 9. <clears throat> With the tongue we bless God, even the Father, and with the tongue we curse men, which are made after the similitude of God. Verse 10. Out of the same mouth proceeds blessing and cursings. My, my brothers, this should not be so. That's not what I was trying to say. He, he, that, yeah, it was. It was verse 9. We, we curse men, which are made after the likeness of God. So when, you're, when people talk down to you, it's because they don't recognize that you are created in God's image. You, you, you're, you're, just, you're just somebody in their way. You're just somebody that, that they're, they're trying to, they're trying to get, get through, right? They don't recognize the God-likeness that's in you. Um, let me use it. When you talk down to people, how many of you have said, Pastor, I've, I've, I've talked down to people before? Okay, let, 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 let's just kind of all get, y'all are getting real nervous here. I just want to, 
want to help us here, going to help us just a little. James is tough. That's why I'm saying. We're, I'm not just talking to any individual. This is the church thing. This is all of us thing. And, and because, because you discipline the way you were disciplined. You raised your kids the way you were raised. And if you were railed on and called names all of your life, guess what you're going to do? You're going to do the same thing unless you realize and you wake up as a believer, I'm supposed to live differently. And the, the way I live differently, I know what God has done inside of me. <clears throat> Dude, he changed me. I'm not the same boy I was when I was you know, 8, 9, 10, 12, 13, 14 years old. I'm different now. God has done something inside of me. He lives inside of me. Does he live inside of you? Then you're somebody completely different now, Right? And so you don't have to let the tape that's playing in your head tonight that, that tells you how horrible you are, what a victim you are, amen? You need to stop that tape that's playing in your head and you need to just stand up and you need to tell that lying devil, I am made after the image of God. I'm not worthless. I'm not lazy. I'm not, I'm not immature and insecure. I am a man of God or I'm a woman of God. I'm created in his image. I'm called by his name. I am washed in his blood. He sees value inside of me. If not, you will be ruled by words that were spoken over your life when you were just a little boy, a little girl. And I'm, I'm here tonight, I came here tonight with a purpose to let you know you don't have to live that way anymore. Marriages are destroyed because two people start calling each other stupid names. Come on, what's wrong with you? Are you saved? Now look. I haven't always wanted that beautiful, blonde, gorgeous bombshell that I'm married to. I haven't always recognized the glory of God in her. Sometimes I'm wanting to slap that devil out of her. Hello? Guess what? She has laid hands on me and cast the devil out of me. <laughs> Hello? you got to understand, this thing's a two-way street, honey. But our mission as, as men and women of God is not to call those things that are as though they are. Our mission is to change people's lives, starting with our spouses, starting with our children, and to call them what they're going to be, to speak into their future, to tell them what they can be, to Prophesy. Come on, parents, you are the greatest prophets your kids are ever going to know. God has locked within you the keys to unlock potential in your kids' lives. But instead, we get mad because they didn't make up their bed. And we call them names. I'm sorry, that was just a flashback. Come on, I'm preaching wherever one of us have lived. And some of us are still living there. Words, James is saying here. Words matter. Words matter. Language matter. Listen, I learned this in, in, in college English. The first casualty of war is language. they got to change the language. And when we're in warfare, we got to understand that what we say matters. Heaven pays attention to every word that comes out of our mouth. And not only does heaven pay attention, but you got to know your enemy is listening to what's coming out of your mouth. That's why you don't give voice to the negative. I, 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 power this, the power, I titled this the power of positive. Not positive thinking, but positive living. Living right. living, Understanding God is living on the inside of you, even when you give me a fit. I'm not talking about the church, folks. I'm talking about just... Y'all don't give me a fit. Y'all are just wonderful people. Every one of you. You're so godly. You're so wonderful. It, it literally freaks some people out when I meet them, and I know that they're struggling, and I'll, I'll, I'll put, shake their hand, these guys, and I'll say, God, oh, what an awesome man of God you are. And they're like, what you say? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and sometimes, yeah, I got I to gotta, I gotta kind of stir up a little faith to say that because <laughs> I know who they are. <laughs> it's nobody that goes here. But, but, but I understand.
understand that, 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 that people need, God's people need to be encouraged. Sometimes they need to be corrected. Can you correct people and still call them up? Can you correct people and still lift them? Absolutely. Our, our job, according to James here, is that we're to, we're to be calling people up. Let me, let me get to my notes. I'm, I'm going to beat that horse to death. There are, there are wounds that don't bleed. And there are scars that don't show. And both of them are caused, usually, by a word spoken not in season. <laughs> Proverbs is going to talk about there's nothing sweeter than a word spoken in season. How many of you love those? But there are words that are spoken out of season in the wrong attitude, in the, with the wrong... You know, it may, well, pastor, it was the truth. You little self-righteous self thing, get over yourself. When did you become the arbiter of all truth? I just told the truth. Yeah, and you cut people, you cut people, you set them on fire, and, and your motivation is hell, according to James. Get over your sweet self and, and take the responsibility to call people into what God has prepared for them. Otherwise, you'll, you'll, you'll introduce scars into their life that just don't. There, there are scars that people have even in this, in this uh, room tonight that no amount of plastic surgery can repair. Yeah. Amen? There are insecurities that no matter how many lovers you have, no matter how many trophies are on the bookshelf, no matter how many times your name is written up in the lights, it'll never be enough. <clears throat> Come on, hear me. No matter what it is you're chasing right now, if the motivation for what you're doing is because you're trying to, you're trying to answer this, this wound that's in you, and, and so you're driving and you're striving and you're trying to achieve this or you're, you're chasing this because somebody said you'll never make it. Do you know what the worst thing you can do to curse yourself is? I'm never going to be like my daddy. You know what you've just done? You have just cursed yourself. You are going to be exactly like your daddy. It scares me to death. I answer the phone, and my, my dad is 85 years old. I'm a young man. I answer the phone at my dad's house, and these old people, well, SJ, what are you doing? Dear God, woman, I'm 61 years old, all right? He's 85. I don't sound like him. You sound just like him. How does that happen? I swore I'd never be like my daddy. Just like him. Sound like him. Come on. Be careful what you speak, what comes out of this thing. James, we read it tonight. It is an unruly evil. We can, we can put, I was going to bring bits and, and go through that whole gig tonight and show you, you know, how, how I used to, to train a horse. That ain't going to help you. James just made a reference to it, passing reference, and I want to run off with an illustrated sermon on because I like it. Because there's so much truth. But I said, no, I can't do that. So then I was going to get a rudder for a ship. I didn't have a forklift. <laughs> James is just simply trying to make a point, guys. He said, you know, we can control things in our environment. Why can't we control our tongues? Why is it so difficult to speak words of life instead of words of death? When we know the truth. We know what, how we ought to speak, right? Do this. Just do that. Nobody will know, you're, you're, you know that, that God is just really nailing you between the eyes. Just, yeah. You're right, Pastor. Amen. And you shout every once in a while, Amen. That they'll they'll just think it's somebody else. Hello. James is saying, you know, we th these these thousand pound animals. You you know you sit there when I when I ride my, my horse badger. You know I, I don't even move the reins. I just I move my, my 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 seat a little bit. I put a little pressure with the knee, and he'll just he'll just flip and turn and go and ooh, you know, it, it's really not about the bit anymore because he's become so sensitive. To, my, to, to the pressure. That, 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 that rudder on that ship, that captain's not sitting here driving, turning this way and turning. No, 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 no. He, 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 
He gets that thing lined out, and it just goes. And he make a little correction every once in a while to keep it on, bu- bubble in the middle. Keep that, that, that uh, I was going to say the compass, but y'all don't even know. You kids don't even know what a compass is. Keep that GPS going right. <clears throat> so he said, if, if, if we can tame these massive ocean-going freighters and, and we can tame these thousand-pound animals and, and then he'll make reference to all kind of birds and animals and we get these animals doing silly little tricks. Why can't we tame the tongue? <clears throat> what is the answer? <clears throat> what I hear back here? Heart. What would you say? You got to have a want to. Yeah. Has anybody ever trained a dog? Let me back up. Has anybody ever tried to train a dog? Ah, oh, now, now, there we go. <laughs> Not successful, huh? You ought to see my carpet and you'd know, she said. <laughs> yeah, buddy. Whew. All right, I ain't going there. <laughs> Why are we unsuccessful at, at, at training animals? Because certain people are very successful. Because we're not consistent. Because we're not consistent. That what now that let me just break that down for me, you know, because I only have a you know a twelfth grade education. So you're saying that we don't do the same thing over and over again. We don't have a system to to train the 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 the, the, the little animal. I'm sorry, I was pointing at the mind, but the, we don't have a system to train the animal, right? You know, you watch the dog whisper. I mean, he can get them dogs just lickety split, you know, just doing good. But he does the same thing over and over and over again. I, I'm working with my granddaughter. She's wanting to start learning to train in horses, so I go up every other week or so, and, and I'll work with her for a few hours. And already we got this horse paying great attention to her. And I'm t- I told her, I said, I've never done this, but I'm going to do it. I, I watched a YouTube video, so I'm an expert. I said, <clears throat> we're going to have this horse laying down before we're done. And, uh, you know, so I, I showed her the steps, and we're just going to break it down and just one little step after another. And before long, she's going to put her little hand right there underneath the horse's armpit and, and give a little signal, and the horse is just going to lay down. Now, how are we going to get there? Well, number one, we've got a goal in mind. If you're going to tame the tongue or train a horse, you've got to have somewhere you want to go. So tonight, I want you to do this. I want, you, I want you to get a goal. Father, I see this. Your word has nailed me between the eyes. I don't want to do this anymore. Can I help you? Not wanting to do it anymore is not going to get you there. Coming down here at this altar tonight and crying for 15 minutes is not going to get you there. You've got to discipline your mind. The tongue, James is saying, this is not an experience. You come up here, and I'm going to lay hands on you. I've got a tongue-taming anointing tonight. I'm going to lay hands on you and your tongue will be tamed. They'd be lined up all the way down there to business 288. <clears throat> and it would be husbands whose wives have them by the ear. <laughs> James is saying the analogy of the training the horse and using the rudder, the analogy is if you're going to get control of your tongue, there's a couple of things you're going to need to do. Number one, you're going to have to have a plan. And number two, you're going to have to have some power. <clears throat> it doesn't, you can have all the power. That engine, uh, you know, they were using sails. You can hoist all the sails or you can get that, the freighter. You can get all that engine running. But if you don't have a plan, you are not going to get to where you want to go. You can, you can have all of the paraphernalia, of the, the, the rigging to put on a horse, the, all the tack that you want, but if you don't know what you're doing and you don't have a plan, you might have power, you might have the facility, but you're never going to get it done. And the same thing with, with, with taming your tongue. I'm not going to go through my testimony, but I am going to make one quick reference to it. I, I tried and tried and tried to have enough power to tame my tongue. I never was able to succeed in that way. I finally had to break down and realize that the power does not reside here. The power is in him. And he will do for you, in you, and through you what you cannot do yourself. But you got to be serious about this. Not just, oh, I wish I didn't do this no more. It's, it was so funny, and it made me so happy. <laughs> Hallelujah. When I busted my finger the other day... And, 
And Bobby's taking me to the hospital, and, and he said, well, <clears throat> I'm proud of you. You didn't cuss. <laughs> and it just, I mean, I didn't have to think about it, did it? It just popped out. I said, Bobby, if it ain't in you, it ain't coming out of you. Amen. Amen. So how do I get these negative emotions, these neg this negative language? How do you get it out? Yeah, because it's in there. If I wanted to cuss, I could cuss right now. You won't hear me? Good, because I'm not going to. <laughs> I, uh, God did not remove the, the, the knowledge of the curse words out. What he did, he healed the curser that is on the inside. And I want to tell you tonight, it might, the cursing might not be your deal, but I want you to know, whatever inside you is broken, he will heal. The reason you do, it's why do we do what we do? Every one of us are going to have to get to the point where we hit the steering wheel and we scream out, why do I do this? Maybe I'm not, It doesn't have to be cussing. It can be talking down. It can be telling your wife that she can't cook. I made a comment to my wife the other day. And <laughs> it was a total accident. Huh? Well, she's been gone ever since. <laughs> she made dinner, and, and you know, it, it was okay. You know, I, I was eating it. I'll eat anything. I'm Mikey, and, and uh, you know, she, she's, how did she say it? I forget. Joyce, you were there. <laughs> she said something like, this is terrible, and I said, honey, it's not as bad as some of the stuff you've made. <laughs> <laughs> wow, honey, they love that one. They're on your side now. <laughs> that was stupid, right? So, so what happens when you really blow it like that? Don't be like pastor. You know, the cowboy philosophy says, you know, when you find yourself in a hole, what are you supposed to do? Put the shovel down. Well, I didn't. <laughs> I kept digging. <laughs> So, all right, let me get back to my notes. Whataburger's been good to me. <laughs> so, you got to have a plan and you got to have power, all right? So the power we know. Why on the day of Pentecost did God send this unheard of gift of other tongues? Guys, I'm telling you, you know, when I see somebody, now, now there are people that have just taught, they learn to talk in tongues. But if you're baptized in the Holy Ghost, you are filled with the Spirit. Listen, and, and I, I was thinking about this this afternoon while I, I'm like, God, help me to communicate this in a way that people will understand. And I'm going to say it this way. It may not be that you need more of the Holy Ghost. It may be that the Holy Ghost needs more of you. Maybe, maybe you need to give him more of yourself. Amen. Let him, because, because he's given you all he can give you because there are rooms that you've got locked up because that's where your woundedness is. How about you open the door and you come clean and green and say, God, I am a messed up puppy and I need you to do a work in my life. And let his spirit fill you. Amen. Uh, the fullness of the Spirit is the power, but then we've got to direct that power. I don't give a kid my, my, my little bitty, you know, Hattie, she's, yeah, I wouldn't give her my pistol because she can't control that kind of power. Come on, you've got to have some direction for that power, so we need a plan. We need a plan. We need to focus the power and that we've got the rudder, we've got the bits, we've got all this stuff. Now let's focus the power of the Spirit that's within us to to. Aim it at the woundedness that's in our heart. Because again, I want to say it again. We wound, wounded people wound people. Hurt people hurt people. And but you you hurt people with your language, with your mouth, because you are wounded on the inside. You do stupid things, but not because you're stupid, but because you're wounded. We need to open the door and let Jesus come in and heal that. So we open and we say, Father God, help me to get down to the root. I'm going to go back to the root, brother. <laughs> I'm going to go back to the root. 
It's not the fruit. We're worried about the cussing, the drinking, the smoking, the beating. The, 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 you know, let's find out. Why do I do this? Why do I say things that I, I shouldn't say? Do, do, do you know why? Well, let's look at it. Um. <laughs> <All right. coughs> Matthew 12, 34. <coughs> Hank, are you, are, you, are you on the ball? Hank's always on the ball. Matthew 12, 34. Look, he's like, you should have seen that. <laughs> if you turn around, mister, you'll see I'm already there. Oh, generation of vipers, this is the gentle, loving Jesus. Oh, gentle generation of vipers, how can you, being evil, speak good things? He's saying it ain't even in you. For out of the what? Of the heart, the mouth speaks. Woundedness comes in the heart. You know, you, 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 you say hurting, cutting things. You say stuff. And, and you know, I, I, I love it when guys at my, you know, when they get around me and they know that I'm a preacher, they try to start controlling their tongue. And it's like, man, I don't know where that came from. I'm like, I do. <laughs> I know where it came from. I can help you. <laughs> it came out of your heart. It, it's not a surprise. So, guys, I'm not judging you. I'm not, and I promise you, I'm not preaching to anybody individually here. I'm talking to the church, and I'm helping you to see. You look at what's come out of your mouth today, yesterday, and if it's been words of cutting, if it's been words that push people down rather than lift them up, you got to understand, don't focus on your words. Look at your heart. Amen. It's in your heart. You need, you need the Holy Ghost to come in and heal that. It means you've got to be honest with yourself. So you've got to have a plan. God, I, this is what I am. I'm, 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 I'm seeing because pastor said it and pastor wouldn't lie to me. Amen. Thank you. Pastor wouldn't lie to me. I need you to do some heart work. Sir, isn't that what David said? He didn't say search my fruit. He said, search my heart. The heart. People, these, these, I almost said it. These uneducated individuals, unenlightened individuals to these days, they say, just follow your heart, brother. My Bible says the heart is deceitful and wicked above anything. Ugh. Follow your heart. You don't follow your heart. You take control of that thing. Bringing every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. Because when it says heart, it's not talking about your blood pumper. It's talking about the, 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 the psyche, this thing right here, the way you think, what you meditate on, this, this automatic impulse that drives you. This thing is wicked. Look at your neighbor and say, you know, he's right, but you're talking about yourself, not them. <laughs> it is. I'm talking about mine too. The heart, the mind, this psyche it is, is wicked. It's selfish. It's, it, it, it wants its own. It's why the Word of God says we've got to renew our mind. Jesus, wherever He went, Jesus was up there. Jesus was telling those folks. He was telling those folks. He said, you generation of vipers, you can't, you can't even speak good things because your heart is evil. Out of the, and, and so because your heart is evil, it speaks evil. Do you see that? So what do we do? Put this one up here, brother. Psalms 19, verse 14. Again, the plan, you got to have a plan, and this should be your plan every morning. If you're struggling with this, this ought to be your plan. Every morning you get up and you pray this prayer. Have y'all heard me pray this before? <laughs> Why do you think I pray that? Because I have to pray it. You folks don't want to know me if I don't pray this prayer. <laughs> Hello? Let the words of my mouth. Now look where he start. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna help us. He's starting with the fruit, right? Because the words you're speaking evil because it's in your heart. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. He starts with what's coming out of the mouth. Let the words of my mouth and the what? That's getting down to the root. Do you see it? 
You see, the good words out of the mouth comes from the root of meditating on the Word of God. And the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord. And then he gives a tag. Oh, I love the tag. My strength and my Redeemer. How many of you know this is going to be a pretty tall task? If we're going to, if we're going to do what James is saying and tame in the tongue, it's a bigger job. It's bigger than you are. It's bigger than your pastor is. And I'm going to have to get hold of the Word of God, and I'm going to have to discipline my mind and say, Lord, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart, I want to think right, because if I think right, I'll speak right. And so guess what? I can't feed this thing all the junk that's out there on, 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 in media. Oh, I, I, I feed it too much. Got to turn it off. I, somebody, one of my kids, they came and they, they, they had my phone the other day and they said, where's your Facebook? And I said, well, it's right here. And they said, but it says, do not open. I put it in the folder and I named the folder, do not open. Because <laughs> one time I fasted, and let me tell you what's in there, Facebook, Messenger, Facebook page, and Fox News. When I, fast, when I fast, I put it in that do not open folder to remind me when my, when my mind says, I just need, to, I need social media. I need the fix. And so as soon as I click on that folder, it says, don't open. Don't open it. That's not where you need to go. Does that sound like a plan? What am I doing? I'm trying to control what's going in here. Because if I notice that out of my mouth is coming things that shouldn't be there, it tells me that what's in my heart is not right, and my heart is not right because what I'm feeding it. He says I need to be meditating on the Word of God. I need to be meditating. His Word I will meditate day and night. God told uh, Joshua before he took the... Moses is dead. Joshua's got this burden placed upon him. And God keeps telling him, Joshua, don't be afraid. It's going to be okay. (laughs) Why is he telling him that? Because this dude's scared to death. He's like, I can't do this. Moses couldn't do this. And I was his assistant. And now you're wanting me to do this? God keeps coming by him. Moses, Mo, I mean, Joshua, it's going to be okay. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. You know, let, the word, let the word meditate on my word. Let the meditation of your heart be on my word. Think about the word. It's going to be okay because I'm with you. Sometimes I just got to remind myself that. If I don't, what begins to come out of my mouth? Man, the church is dying. Church is dying. I'm a failure. You know, I, I preach to myself all the time. If I just turn this thing loose... I'm a failure. Nobody likes me. This is horrible. I need to quit. I need to, I, I, I need to go do something else. I need to go to the mountains and just stay. stay gone. My wife doesn't love me. My kids, they never call me. You know, my kids never call. I call them on the phone and they don't answer. I text them and they don't answer. Nobody loves me. I sound like who? Sound like Rudy? Come on, bro. Me and you. Misery loves company. Anybody else want to join mine and Rudy's club? Hey, all right, all right, all right, good, good, yeah. No, see, see how easy that is? We can just get a big old club. We're all miserable together. And so when, uh, no, thank you, thank you, thank God. So when my mind starts running in that direction, I have to, I have to, I could take you to first, uh, Second Corinthians. It says the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty through God. We always want to talk about we're fighting devils with that. You need to go read that verse again. That ain't talking about fighting the devil. That's talking about fighting your brain. Come on. It says we bring every, every what? Every what? Every thought captive and make it obey Christ. God, that, that don't happen by accident. That doesn't happen because you came up here and you got the... That's when you get up on Monday morning. You get a hold of that thing that's running uncontrolled. You say, hold it. I'm not going there. I'm telling you, I, I told the staff, uh, Pam, and, Pam and Joyce, don't call pastor on Mondays. Mondays are terrible for preachers. Preachers, all preachers. If a pastor quits, he quits on Monday morning. I'm telling you. It's just the way it works. I, I don't know why. 
And so I get up and I've got to get hold of that thing. That's why I said the weapons of your warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty through God. To the pulling down of stronghold and you're bringing captive imaginations and the thoughts. Do you see where we're going? Oh, make it obey Christ. That ain't the devil. That's you. God's telling you. James is telling you. You can tame horses and you can make a dog sit or go, go fetch a duck that's flopping in the water. Why can't you get hold of this? It's because you've not taken the time to discipline your mind. You've not hidden the word. Thy word have I hidden in my heart. In where? Not the blood pump. I, I've, I've put it here. It starts here and then it gets down into my spirit. Thy word have I hidden in my heart that I won't sin against you I won't say things that are hurtful I'll say things that are lifting amen all right I already said that if it's not in you it's not going to come out of you let's look at the last part I'm sure it's I threw my phone down a while ago do not open let's look at the last couple last couple of verses Verse 15. Let me back up to 14. Back up to 13. There's a good spot. Who is a wise man and endued with knowledge among you? Let him show out of a good conversation his works with meekness and wisdom. But if you have bitter envy and strife in your hearts, don't glory. Don't lie against the truth. This wisdom that descends from above is, uh, uh, I'm sorry, this wisdom, the lying and the strife and all that stuff, is not from above, descends not from above, but it is earthly, sensual, and devilish. Okay? I, I, I don't want to belabor that point. But I do want you just to search your own heart. If there's bitterness and envy and strife in your heart, that's not, that's not the will of God for your life. That's not what the Holy Spirit came to deposit within you. And if you are a spirit-filled, quote-unquote, spirit-filled believer, there should not be bitterness and envy and strife and jealousy and all this kind of stuff. It comes from assuming that God owes you something. Where does bitterness come from? Anybody ever been bitter before? Okay, let's, let's share in very generic terms, where did the bitterness come from? What, what were you bitter about? Anybody ever been bitter about a job situation? Somebody got a promotion rather than you. Let me see. There you go. There you go. Okay, let's just go there. So, Jerry, you were bitter. I'm sorry, you didn't raise your hand, but, you know. You were bitter because somebody got promoted before you. Why do you think you have the right to be bitter about that? <laughs> <clears throat> I was just using you as a, as a straw man. A straw man. Because I deserved it. I'm more qualified. I'm more faithful. Because the way they got it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I seen them out there bringing them donuts and sitting on that boss's desk and sitting up there and washing his car. I, I heard he even went out and mowed his grass on Saturday. Yeah. Oh, oh. I've said that. I've tr I trained like three bosses on one job. They wouldn't give it to me because I was too young. I wasn't too young to train them, but I was too young to. And I was bitter. Bitterness is, is simply assuming that God does not take care of you. Hello? So what he said, you know, you, you get angry with people and you don't realize they're made after the image of God. Let me tell you something. Modern day Western Christianity is so messed up because we don't understand the selflessness of Christ. The is all, uh, I mean, uh, uh, Philippians 2, 5, the kenosis, the Greek word is kenosis, that, that Christ emptied himself of himself. Put that at Philippians 2, 5, put that up there. It's, let this mind be in you, which was also in Jesus Christ. Christ Jesus. Again, six, go to six. 
who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God. Again, we'll get to the verse in a minute. But made himself, right there, made himself. <clears throat> that Greek word is kenosis. It is a self-emptying. It was a conscious choice that he put his id, in, in, in psychological terms, his id, he took his self and he laid it aside. And what, did, what was the result of putting self aside? Look at it. And took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. Again, hit the next one. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of <sighs> kenosis. Say kenosis. <clears throat> the self-emptying. That if, if Jesus had not laid self aside first, when he got to Gethsemane, he would have prayed, Father, if it's possible, let this cup pass from me, and the devil would have offered him plan B. And he'd have took it. <clears throat> Hello? Because self will find a way around it, a way to justify it. <clears throat> you didn't get the promotion. You trained the boss. But you know what? This job is not my provider. <laughs> promotion comes from the Lord. So I'm just going to keep serving. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Oh, there's somebody in my mind. I'm not going to call your name, but I hope you're watching this. God's talking to you. Oh, because the boss ain't cutting it. I should have, you know, why should I put up with this? But you have that attitude because you don't believe. You're saying more what you think about God than what you think about your boss. Does that make sense? Am I helping you? The kenosis. You've got to lay yourself. Christians in Western Christianity don't understand this. How can, how can these folks go to the point of martyrdom? How, do, how does someone die for their faith? The kenosis. They let, they, they, they've already, my life is, can I quote scripture to you? My life is not my own. King James says, you're, don't you know that your life is not your own, that you have been bought with a price? Therefore glorify God in your body and your spirit, which both belong to him. What is he saying? You don't have, you, I, if you, when you surrender your life, when you surrender your life, when you, what? Surrender your life to Christ, you lose the rights to become offended. This is, this is, this is New Testament Christianity. That you don't have the right to be offended. Because your, your commitment, you put your life in the hands of Jesus. And he's got you. And your offense is betraying the fact that your heart does not have faith in Christ. Hello. The fact that you're offended tells me and everyone around you that knows the word of God. He just didn't trust Christ. She just did, she didn't have the faith she claimed to have. It, it breaks my heart. That's what, why do we, why is this city full of believers that have got offended and hurt in church? Because they've not been taught that they don't belong to themselves any longer. Oh God, I'm going to preach. I don't care if I preach till midnight. They have been taught that they're, they can be saved and still be a, a free spirit. Somebody, that preachers in the pulpit have lied to you. When Christ, I'm going to quote Paul, when Christ, who is my life, shall appear. Did you hear it? Yeah, he's going to talk about the rapture. Then I'll be like, but, but his words, when Christ, who is my life, not Christ that gave me life. Not Christ that saved my life. Not Christ that, that, that gives me life that the devil can't take. No, he is God. If, if he is my life, there, there ain't no offense. What you going to do to me? 
Let me tell you something. My God keeps really good records. It wasn't me, was it? Shh. Die. Let me, quick story and we'll move on. My wife, when uh, I, I, I got this job and <laughs> my boss was the devil. He was, he was the Antichrist spawn. He persecuted me relentlessly for no reason. I was wonderful. Everybody knew I was wonderful. The ones that didn't know that should have. <laughs> God, listen, I prayed. God said, go. I had a wonderful job. And God, they called me. They wanted me. And I didn't want to go. And God said, go. And I, I just had enough of the Holy Ghost where I wanted the will of God. So I went. And this demon persecuted me for three and a half years. Hounded me. It's horrible. So we find, my wife, you know, he, he, he got me, he wanted to fire me, but he knew he couldn't get away with that because I was good. I, but the problem is I knew I was good. That was the problem. And so he couldn't fire me, so he transferred me out. And my wife was so mad. And she, you know, the Holy Spirit said, pray for him. And she said, I, I don't want to pray for him. Because if I pray for him and he gets saved, then we're going to have to spend heaven together. That was, that was her problem. I didn't have that problem. She had that problem. What does that come from? Again, thinking that God was not in control. When God, we would say, if you... God sent me here. I told him, and that's what kind of got the thing started off. He said, I don't know why you're here. I ain't hiring you. They're, they're making me hire you. And it made me angry. And I was young and stupid. I said, let me tell you something, man, mister. I said, I didn't want to come here to begin with, but I prayed about it, and God told me to take this job. So here I am, me and you going to have to work around it. <laughs> Not the best thing to say to your new boss. <laughs> How many of you believe God sent me to that job? Why did God send me there? To te teach is a nice word. He sent me there to whoop my rear end is what he did. Because we only learn sometimes by the pain. Oh, by the pain. The French have a phrase, that I can't speak French, but it means suffering builds character. God knows that's a fact. That horse training, I make the right behavior easy, the wrong behavior difficult. If you do the wrong thing, life is going to get really hard. I, I, think, I think I'm smarter than a horse, but sometimes I don't think people are. I think God is a good horse trainer. And he makes your life miserable until you get on track. Until you do what he said do. And, and, and so, so to, to deal with my heart, I've got to understand. I can't let bitterness and envy and strife take over when things don't go my way. David even said Absalom was stealing the throne from him. And, 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 and him and his mighty men were running out of the palace because Absalom and the armies were coming in. How many of you read that? And, and, and I never can say this guy's name. It starts with an S. We'll call him Smith. Mr. Smith was throwing rocks at him and cussing him and kicking dirt at him. Calling down curses, and boy, old oh, David's mighty man, he whooped that sword. He said, I'll kill this. He said, he's a dog. He's a dead dog. David said, no, put that sword back where it belongs. He said, it may be God has bidden him to curse me. That is the heart God's after. That's why God said of David, even though he was a murderous man, an adulterer. This is a man after my heart. Because he trusts that I'm in control. And he doesn't let bitterness and strife. Oh, come on. Now, David, yeah, he wasn't perfect. I ain't trying to put him off as perfect. But I, 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 I'm trying to help us to see that the wisdom, verse 17, the wisdom that is from above is pure. 
peaceable, gentle, easy to be entreated, meaning it's not hard-headed. Just hit the altar whenever I hit you, all right? I figured, I really thought they'd be full by now. Full of mercy. Can I, can I tell you a little bit about what the heart of Jesus does in the believer? Love covers. Speak, Lord. Love, listen, listen, listen. Love covers a multitude of sin. Love doesn't expose. Love covers. Love will confront, but it doesn't blow up. You hear it? That's why I tell people, you know, you know people say, you know, I don't know if I'll be accepted here because I've lived a pretty rough life. <laughs> and I tell them, I'm like, dude, if you knew half the people's story in here, you wouldn't come around this place. <laughs> but most of us don't know these stories. Why? Because love covers. You're not the judge and you ain't the jury. There's a judgment day coming and you ain't sitting on the throne. You're behind the one on the throne. Amen. Or you're in front. If you're in front, you're on your own. I'm going to be behind him. Come on. Full of mercy and good fruits. Where does a good fruit come from, Keith? It comes from the root. Read it. Oh, my Lord. Ephesians 3.17. Put that up there. The people on the, on the video didn't hear it. But the wisdom that is from... Whoop. Yeah, back up. He was wrong. Back up to the 16th verse. That he would grant you, according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with might by his Spirit in the inner man. Now go to 17. That Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, that you being rooted and grounded in love may be able to comprehend with all saints. Come on, say it with me. What is the breadth and the length and the depth and the height of God? And know the love of Christ, which passes knowledge, that you might be filled with all the fullness of God. Isn't that a good place to stop? Amen. Amen. That to know, James is saying, to know Christ. Now, God forbid, but one day, in a given situation, I might lose it and a cuss word come out. God forbid that that ever happens. Hasn't happened only one, four times in the last 41 years. So I don't think it's going to happen. But it could. It could. Right, But that's not the norm for my life. Because it's not in me. It's not what I feed. I don't, I don't entertain those thoughts. You know, I'm, 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 I'm not going to. If you ever hear that pastor went out and got drunk, you got to know something. Somebody has drugged me, hypnotized me. Something has happened. Because that's not in me. Now, I wish I could keep running a list of major sins that I would never do, but I have to stop right there. <laughs> Hello? Because I ain't perfect. I'm still living in this flesh, and the devil still is a, is a, is a worthy adversary, and he knows how to push my buttons. But what I must do is when that temptation comes, I must run to the cross. I must... I must keep putting in my spirit. I, I, I'm pointing to my head because I want you to get this. We keep saying, in my heart, and we really don't know what that means. Your heart starts up here. Come on, the, the heart is the spirit of man, the, the, the psyche of man. What the, 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 the mind, the will, the emotions, this soul, is, it starts here. I've got to, the spirit, the spirit of God in you is perfect. But your soul, your mind, will, and emotions must be renewed. It must be disciplined. It must be transformed. And the way we do all this, all that scripture, go look it up. The way we do all this 
is we start by, by getting control of this thing. Because it, it, my mouth is not going to speak it if it's not in my mind, in my heart. And if I, if I get the Word of God in my mind and in my heart, if I get His Spirit to control this thing, if I discipline my mind and I, I tell it, you will pray. I don't want to pray. You will. Billy, we were talking on the phone today, and we're talking about, you know, uh, you know, we, maybe we need to go on a fast. And I said, we do need, because the Spirit of God's been talking to me about that. And then I find out when I got home talking to, I think, Bobby, you know, some of the men are already on a fast. I'm like, nobody told me. <laughs> but I told Billy, I said, I said, the Lord's been talking to me that too, but I, I'm not, I, I'm, I've got to schedule this fast for this reason. I don't want to go on a diet. I, wanna fa I, wanna, I want to fast and pray. That means I've got to push everything else aside. Why do you need to fast and pray, Pastor? Because I need to get hold of this thing. Fasting don't change God. God wants you holy. He wants this church holy. He wants this city saved. He wants this nation saved. God is not willing that any perish, but everyone come to repentance. But folks, there is a spiritual power that is at play. And we need the strategies of Christ. And so I've got to discipline my mind by disciplining my body. Are you getting the picture here? That the way you get the bit in the horse's mouth and the rudder on the ship is you get a plan, you get the power, and you put, it to, you put to work the practice, the discipline of the Lord. Praying and fasting is not easy. Let me tell you something. I, I was talking to, to somebody else yesterday. And I told him, I said, you know, they were, you know, I was just tired and I'm just, you know, I just didn't feel like coming to church. I told him. I said, let me tell you something. You know, I don't just ha didn't ha get, suddenly get the discipline of, of a church attendance and tithing when I started pastoring. This has been a discipline of my life since, since the day I got saved. Because I found where my life is. See, the reason some people don't, don't attend church regularly and don't pray regularly is because they get fed on everything else. They can live without it. I've determined I can't live without it. I can't live without that altar. I can't live without the Word of God. I need my brothers and sisters in this house. If I wasn't pastoring, I'd be coming to this church. Y'all going to have to run me out with on a rail, tar and feather me, and run me out of town because I'm going to be here. Fire me if you want to. I'm, I'm coming. This is where I want to be. I want to be in the house of God. I want to be with the people of God. I need this. You got it? So because, because this is where life is. So I didn't just suddenly start disciplining myself. Do I feel like it's, I'm tired and I don't want to? I woke up at 2.30 this morning. I was at work at a quarter till 6 today. I trained out in the hot sun all day. I got off at 3 o'clock. I came home, got home at 4. I was going to take a bath, and then somebody called. I ain't saying nothing. I'm, I got up, took a bath, and I came to church because this is my life. And Christ, who is my life. Well, pastor, Christ is your life. The church ain't your life. Let me tell you, on Wednesday night, at 7 o'clock, I can tell you where Jesus Christ is going to be. 709 West Mulberry Drive, Angleton, Texas. Jesus is going to be right here. What in the world are you talking about, Pastor? Because we are the body of Christ. And where two or three are gathered in his name, he will be right here. If you're out there and you need yours, where is God? I'll tell you where he is on Wednesday night. He's sitting right here in this chair. Actually, I think he's in that one. No, he's right there. No. You hear me? So discipline yourself. Get a hold of your tongue. I've tried, I can't. I'll tell you what God told me. If you'll stand to your feet, I'll quit preaching. God told me. God told me when I said, God, I can't do this. I can't quit cussing. He said that. He never said, oh, yes, you can. Oh, yes, you can, Brad. You can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. He did not tell me that. He said, that's right. You can't, but I can. Paul will say, I'm crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I. Christ is living in me. And the life that I live now in the flesh, 
I live by faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Amen? Lift those hands to heaven. We've, we've talked about it all night long. Some of you here are struggling with life-controlling issues. Amen. I'm not minimizing that. It's a big deal to you. But I want to tell you tonight, it's not a big deal to your God. It ain't a big deal. It, there's nothing that you've done that he's not seen before. My God, I would never go to a doctor with cancer that had never treated a case of cancer, that he was, he was practicing or experimenting on me. This God has seen it all. <clears throat> and he says, come unto me, you that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. <clears throat> Take my yoke upon you. What he's saying is you lay that burden down, give that to me, you take my yoke and learn of me. For I'm meek and lowly in heart for, and you will find rest unto your souls. Father, we love you. And Lord, I pray over this house tonight and those that are watching this video. Father God, there are men and women that have controlling issues. It's destroying them. It's destroying their lives. Lord, there's bitterness, there's strife, and there's every evil work. Father, would you just do a heart transformation according to Romans 12, 1 and 2. That, Father, they, they present their body as a living sacrifice at an altar of prayer somewhere. And Lord, they allow it. They stay in that altar until their mind has been transformed by the Word of God. And, Lord, they never get away from an altar. Oh, God, teach us to pray. That was the disciples' cry. Oh, God, teach us to pray. Lord, I pray that you'll do that this night. Amen. I'm going to open this altar up. I'm going to invite you to come. Find a place. Do not leave this house until you've either turned around at your chair. Come up here. Look, you're dealing with this stuff. This is not, this, I hadn't been preaching some pie in the sky. This is where you're living. Why don't you put this truth to practice and wait for the help of God? Amen.